Hey guys, today I have an interview for you with Prudence Thompson, who is with Accent Health Recruitment. She's based in Christchurch and she recruits medical professionals from around the world and helps place them in jobs as part of the immigration process. She's also active in my Moving to New Zealand Facebook group, so if you have any questions for her, feel free to join the group and you can tag her there, or probably the best way to get in touch with her is just to pop her an email. All of the details will be linked in the description box down below, including a link to my Facebook group and also to my Moving to New Zealand YouTube playlist with lots of videos answering questions and topics that might be of interest to you if you are planning on making the move here. So should we jump in? Hi Prudence, thanks so much for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Accent Health Recruitment before we jump into the questions? Sure, so Accent Health Recruitment are a recruitment agency based in New Zealand. Um, we've been uh, operating now for 15 years. We have a team of five fantastic recruiters, two of whom have come from a nursing background, a medical background and teaching. And our job is to find you a job in New Zealand. That sounds great. Which professions do you play? We recruit uh, all medical professions, um, anything from nurses, doctors, physios, midwives, speech language therapists, occupational therapists, operating department technicians or anaesthetic technicians, um, even optometrists. We recruit a lot of GPs and uh, senior consultants. So pretty much anyone who works in the hospital. Okay, that's quite a wide range. Do you find that some of those professions are more in demand than others? Look, it does vary, Jen. There's, um, at the moment, we're very short of midwives, physios, psychiatrists, anaesthetists, um, theatre nurses, um, and also radiographers. So it varies all the time. Sometimes there's a huge need for some occupations, but with flexibility from the candidate's point of view, means that there's always opportunities in New Zealand. Okay, awesome. And if you are one of the professions and you and they contact you for help with a job, how much say do they have in terms of area to live in? It would depend on the years of experience. It would be case by case. But if you're a general mental health nurse or an anaesthetist or a midwife, I could say you could work in one of the 20 district health boards in New Zealand, depending on when you're coming and for how long and your years of experience. Okay, so you will have a say of where you actually get to live. You don't just have to go to an area that has a shortage. Yep, absolutely. Yep, and different times of year have different shortages. So if you're patient, you'll wait and get the perfect job. Okay, so you're placing candidates who are abroad and not in New Zealand at the moment. Yes. I take it that's largely what you do. Yes, all of the candidates that we recruit are from offshore, as close as Australia, but as far away as the Netherlands, Europe, the US, um, Canada, South Africa, uh, and also Singapore. That is awesome because getting a job is one of the huge hurdles in getting residency or getting a visa. Yes. Are there certain countries that the healthcare system and infrastructure and facilities are more similar and they'll have an easier time integrating? Yeah, probably England and Canada, um, but surprisingly Singapore and some parts of the US. We've got a socialized health system um, but all medical professionals are welcomed because they bring their own strengths as well. Okay, great. And are there certain countries where you cannot place their medical professionals in New Zealand? Look, there are, I'm afraid. We've got about 16 uh, countries that we can recruit from, but it's still worth contacting us because it depends on the occupation, where they've done their training. They might have trained, for example, in South Africa, but done their postgraduate experience in Singapore or England or America. So it is definitely case by case. And their best bet is to just get in contact with you and see if you can help them. Absolutely. Have a look at our website and see what, see what, um, how to contact us. And we're happy to review your CV and usually get back to you within 24, 48 hours. Okay. You mentioned postgraduate experience. How much postgraduate experience in your home country is required before you can apply in New Zealand? You do generally need two years postgraduate experience, but again, it depends on the occupation. Um, a newly graduated general practitioner will be able to come and work in New Zealand, obviously under some supervision. Physios can come after one year, but we ideally like two to three years, just so you can consolidate your postgraduate experience in New Zealand first. Okay, that's great. So I'm assuming that the qualifications will be different with different countries. Do you help with converting those qualifications for New Zealand? We um, accept a different list of qualifications again for each occupation. Um, most of the qualifications from overseas are accepted into New Zealand. 
Um, for example, we accept nurses with diplomas and postgraduate training into New Zealand, whereas Australia don't accept diploma nurses into New Zealand. And are there any exams that they'll need to sit? No, that's the good thing. There's a lot of paperwork, but no exam, which is fabulous. The paperwork. The paperwork is intense when immigrating, which takes me on to the question about working with an immigration advisor. Do you work together with the immigration advisor or is the candidate the go-between? Oh, absolutely. We work very closely with the immigration advisor where someone's migrating from overseas. A lot of the paperwork that we require for employment purposes is also required for immigration purposes. So if you work with an immigration advisor, it's very um, advantageous because you oh, there's not the double handling and the double requests for paperwork. And we all we work very much on the same page and we're on the same wavelength. That's awesome. So you work with an immigration advisor if the candidate is using one or directly with the candidate if they're making their own application but you don't actually do any of the visa handling yourself or visa application? No, we're not legally able to do that because we're not immigration advisors, um, but we strongly recommend using an immigration advisor that sort of suits your needs, whether it's residency or a work visa. So how do you go about placing a candidate from abroad? Yeah, the process takes anywhere between six weeks and six months. Uh, first, we get a copy of the CV. We do reference checks and we make sure the documentation is prepared and ready to present for the registration in New Zealand. The registration will take anywhere between six weeks and six months as well. Once that candidate or nurse or doctor or physio or midwife or whatever has got their registration in New Zealand, we can then proceed to an interview. What we do is we identify a job that we think will suit the candidate. We will present their CV and their references through to their potential employer. The employer will then arrange an interview, usually by Skype, once we've got the Skype interview organised, we'll do some preparation and some interview training with the candidate. Once they've got their interview, they usually offer the, offer the job either on the spot or within the next few weeks. Then they'll offer the job in paper and they've got a chance to have a look at that document to make sure that they're happy with it. Once they've um, accepted the job and they've got their registration, they can then apply for the visa and set their start date in New Zealand. Once they've got their start date arranged, we then organise to pick them up from the airport, arrange to get them cell phones, help them with their tax number, their bank account, advise on shipping or pet relocation, whatever is important to them. Yeah, it's quite a process we go through with them. It's quite lengthy. Um, as I said, anywhere from three weeks to three years, we stay in touch with people. Oh, wow. So it sounds like you provide quite a good level of aftercare as well. So it's not a case of we've placed the candidate and we're done now. Yep, absolutely. We, we um, have a great follow-up um, program with our candidates. So we go through the whole process with them. Um, we stay in touch week one, week two, week three, week four, up to six months. Um, and then, you know, we do a lot of this. We, we don't charge for our services. We're free, but we do work exclusively with candidates because we don't want them to dilute their chances of getting a job. Yeah, okay. That, that sounds fair. So you mentioned the you know, getting the job, negotiating. Do you help with negotiation of pay and terms of employment? We do, yeah. A lot of um, our staff are employed on a, a nationwide contract. So there's not a lot of room to move, but we can negotiate the start date, leave without pay, perhaps some relocation if that's offered by some hospitals. Okay. And what happens if a candidate has come through your agency, they've been placed, they've got their visa, they've moved to New Zealand, and let's say five years down the line, they want to move to a different area or they want a different job. Do you help them as well or are you exclusively helping new immigrants? No, in fact, we absolutely, we had someone recently that we recruited and it must have been seven years ago and she came, she went back to the UK, then worked in Australia and called us again, said she wanted to work in Dunedin. So she's there, she started two weeks ago. So it does, it works really well. We do keep in touch. Okay, so that's a candidate who's left the country and returned. What about a candidate yeah. who's, who remains in the country? Oh yes, absolutely. They usually call us and say, I've been working here for three years now. I'm ready to try the South Island or the North Island or somewhere a bit more remote or more in the city or their needs have changed for their partner's employment, um, if that's the case. And that works really well. We're able to re-recruit them. Awesome. So what are the potential roadblocks along the way that candidates need to be aware of? The journey and of migration and coming to New Zealand, there are quite a few wee hurdles along the way. A lot of it is about timing because if you have an interview, you're offered a job, you're expected to start within sort of six to 12 weeks. So um, 
getting your paperwork and your ducks lined up before you are ready to come is important. Things like the medical check and the police check, they have a three or six month expiry on them. Um, obviously, you've got to do your shipping and your house and your cat vaccinations or your dog vaccinations. So it's about timing and just regular, regular emails. We say persistence, paperwork and patience are the three things that help you in the journey of migrating to New Zealand. Yeah, we found that it's crucial to get your paperwork absolutely perfect before submitting because that's when a lot of expense and a lot of delays happen if you have to go back and forth and correct things. Yep, absolutely. Yep, yep. So before a candidate even gets in touch with you, what would you prefer that they had already done to prepare? It's it, it, getting prepared before you contact a recruiter um, is just getting your CV up to date, permission from your referees to contact them. Um, getting through the registration process, or that's something that we help out with as well. Just doing a lot of research on New Zealand um, and being prepared to be open-minded and um, just aware of what the different islands will offer. Okay, and in terms of the CV, I've seen questions come up with immigrants all of the time. They come from different countries and the CVs are laid out in different ways in different countries and there's different requirements. Do you just want to see a CV from them in the format that they're used to and then do you help them to format it in the New Zealand way or would you prefer that they'd already done that? Absolutely, we get their CV from them. Um, we review it and then once we're happy with it with no major career history gaps or um, uh, information that's in the technology that or the terminology that we don't understand so we'll ask them to format and we have a template for each medical occupation and we send that through to the candidates. Okay great. Would you mind sharing an example of a typical candidate from start to finish what their journey looked like? Yep um, the a candidate I recruited from a conference in Manchester and they arrived exactly 12 months after the first we first met them um, he was an anaesthetic technician and she was is a midwife. They started absolutely from scratch, so it took them 12 months to get registered, to have an interview, do the reference checking, to sell their house, to apply for their work visa. Um, we used to email probably once a week over the six month period and then closer to the time of the interview it was almost daily in, in emails. We would go through the process of making sure they had the right documentation for their visas, although we don't advise them, we set list what they need. We also make sure they've got their registration, that all went really, really smoothly. Um, their interviews, there was a delay with one of the interviews because obviously working in the hospital, timetables may not be able to be kept because of medical emergencies, but they both had their interviews a week apart. Um, they were both Skype interviews and they went really well. We did a lot of training on Skype interviews and taught them a lot of in, um, detailed techniques on the Maori culture in New Zealand, how that health impact, the healthcare is impacted, um, and a little bit about the population uh, description of New Zealand. We went through, once they've been offered the job, they actually had other interviews in other locations, but they chose to come to Palmerston North, which was awesome. Once they um, accepted their jobs, they set their start date about 12 weeks after the job offer. They quickly, very quickly sold their house, packed up, shipped everything across. I think they used PSS for their shipping. They got everything across to New Zealand um, and we booked them a motel for when they started. And they had a young boy who was the same age as my son. So we sent off a welcome pack for him and some groceries for them. The employer picked them up from the hospital and that was three years ago and um, he is now, um, a, 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 he's actually a, a, a friend of mine and he is interviewing another staff member on Thursday because he's now the head of the department. Um, she's doing really well in her midwifery and um, the son's just loving New Zealand so I get photos all the time which is great. So the whole process took 12 months and they arrived, I think, in March 2015. So they're doing really well. That's awesome. That sounds like a, a great experience all around. Everything kind of yeah. sounds like it went smoothly, although I know these things do take a long time. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, 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 were, they were a textbook couple, actually. Awesome. So let's say we have a healthcare professional watching this video right now and they think, this is great. I want to get in touch. What is the first step? The first step is just to email us, so have a look at accent.net.nz or email me at info at accent.net.nz.
www.nz and we'll respond to you with, within 24, 48 hours. Um, if you can email us your CV, great, or just tell us a bit about yourself and what you've been doing. Okay, awesome. Thanks so much for your time today. Okay, cheers. So there you have it, that was Prudence answering some questions on placing medical professionals in New Zealand. As I mentioned, all of her contact details will be in the description box down below. If this video is of use to you, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more Moving to New Zealand themed videos as well as vlogs featuring our life here in South Taranaki and a range of other topics. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.